What's up, smarty people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live in a living color from the Radio What studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Smarter? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do I always send you? DJLittleRock.com. One more time, DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote, and maybe you could have me at your next event. You know, I like to party with the people. The people need to be entertained. Make your next thing a big one. Also, if you'd like to tell your story or hear the stories of others, I encourage you to check out my other podcast. It's called What Makes You Famous. Find it everywhere using the hashtag What Makes You Famous. Now, on with the show. Today on the program, interesting facts, six interesting facts about Cinderella or Cinderella. I've heard it both ways. The Walt Disney classic Cinderella or the Cinderella years before that. Let's find out a little bit more about Cinderella. Readers love a rags to riches story, which could be why Cinderella has such a cultural hold On us, even centuries after the tale was first recounted, most versions of the famous fairy tale follow the same pattern. The destitute little girl uh, yearning for a better life makes a magical friend and gets a boost into better circumstances thanks to a shoe. (laughs) But not every detail of the fictional servant turned queen's background is predictable. And here are six fascinating facts you might not know about the Cinderella folktale and movie. Number one. The first Cinderella story may have come from ancient Greece. The ball gown bedazzled Cinderella we know we know today is far from her origins, which may have been in ancient Greece. Some researchers point to the tale of Rhodopis. R-H-O-D-O-P-I-S. I'm going to say Rhodopis. <laughs> A story recorded by Greek geographer Strabo around the first century BCE as a possible beginning. In that account, Rhodopis is a courtesan whose shoe is stolen by an eagle and dropped into the lap of an Egyptian pharaoh. Seeing the shoe as an omen from the gods, the royal sends soldiers throughout the kingdom to track down the shoeless woman who eventually becomes his wife. However, not everyone agrees that the tale of Rhodopis is truly the first Cinderella story. (laughs) Some historians say that Strabo's brief description of the tale is only similar to today's version in that it hinges on a shoe. The centuries-old version lacks a fairy godmother, cruel stepmother, and other key components we now think of as standard. Number two. There are more than 700 versions of the story. Whether or not Rhodopis was the first Cinderella, she certainly wasn't the last. Fairy tales with similar shoe-based plots have cropped up worldwide. Some librarians count more than 500 versions found in Europe alone, while global counts are as high as 700. Culture has played a heavy role in each story's details. One Italian rendition renames the princess Zucantina? Zucatina? Z U C C H E T T I N A. Zucatina. Let's go with that. Because she was born inside of a squash. In the Danish tale, Cinderella, they're called Askepot, A S K E P O T, wears rain boots, a detail particularly fine tuned to Denmark's rainy climate. However, in the version that has had the most recent popularity, first penned by French author Charles Perrault in 1697, Sandrillion, uh, Sandrillon, C-E-N-D-R-I-L-L-O-N, is eventually found by her prince thanks to a glass slipper. Hey, starting to get familiar, right? Uh, the first edition of the story to include such a delicate shoe. Number three, the famed glass ship, uh, glass slipper may have been a political statement. Uh, 
Peralt's choice to cast Cinderella's sparkling shoes from glass may have been less about fashion and more about politics. According to some academic researchers, historian Genevieve Warwick at University of Edinburgh uh, believes that the detail was actually meant in part to poke fun at Louis the Fourteenth, King of France from 1642 to 1715. During his reign, Louis the Fourteenth, who was responsible for developing Versailles into a lavish palace, was known for donning extravagant clothing, particularly shoes. Perrault, who were who worked as a secretary overseeing construction at Versailles, known for its Hall of Mirrors and the Louvre, especially gra- glass work, may have added the glass slipper detail as a bit of satire, mocking the increasingly ostentatious and impractical French fashions of the time. After all, it would be incredibly difficult to actually dance in shoes made of glass. Yet there have also been uh, there may have also been a layer of economic nationalism. Perrault was in charge of setting up royal glassworks for France, which meant the nation no longer needed to be dependent on the glassmakers of Venice. Warwick thinks Cinderella's transformation may have been read by contemporary readers as a metaphor for France's self-determinism and newfound ability to make the king's beloved luxury products for itself. Number four. Walt Disney sketched his first Cinderella nearly 30 years before the feature film. Disney's feature-length ad- adaptation of Cinderella premiered in 1950, though the illustrator actually began tinkering with the story some three decades before. A laughogram, Disney's first studio, or at laughogram, Disney's first studio in Kansas City, the artist tested out his animation skills through an interest in fairy tales. In 1922, the young animator produced a silent seven-minute version of Cinderella, in which her only friend was a cat who helped with the housework, and her fairy godmother sent her off to a ball in in flapper attire and a car instead of a pumpkin. The same year, Disney also put out cartoon shorts of Little Red Riding Hood and Beauty and the Beast, which the company was successfully returned to in 1991. Number five. Cinderella saved Walt Disney from bankruptcy. Cinderella, uh, Cinderella, I keep saying Cinderella. (laughs) Cinderella was Walt Disney's sixth full-length animated film following Snow White and Bambi, among others. But it was the project that finally solidified his studio's success. Disney and a team of animators spent six years developing Cinderella before its 1950 premiere. And the production wasn't just a major investment of time. It was a huge financial gamble. World War II had slowed the studio's projects, and Disney had racked up nearly $4 million in debt to keep the business running. Cinderella cost around $2 million to produce, and it would likely have shuttered Disney's business if it flopped. Luckily, the film grossed more than $4 million at the box office and gained three Oscar nominations for its soundtrack which helped usher in a new era for Disney's studio. Hey, Cinderella saved Walt Disney. How about that? Number six. Rodgers and Hammerstein's adaptation was their only TV musical. Broadway superstars Richard Rodgers and Oscar Hammerstein II wrote 11 musicals during their partnership, though the duo created only one specifically for television viewers, Cinderella. The 90-minute production featured actress Julie Andrews in the leading role. To glowing reviews, Rodgers and Hammerstein's sole TV musical debuted on March 31, 1957, and drew more than 100 million viewers. More than 60% of American households tuned in. Like the everlasting story, Rodgers and Hammerstein's version has been remade for TV and stage time and again in the decades since it aired. Hey, there's some, there's six tidbits, six facts 
about Cinderella. How about that? <laughs> I learned some new stuff. How about you? Drop me some comments below. Let me know what you think. Also, if you'd like to tell your story or hear the stories of others, I encourage you to give me a call. 501-470-6386 or email keysdan at AOL.com. And maybe you could be on the What Makes You Famous podcast. This has been What Makes You Smarter. That's it for me. It's Keys Dan, Radio What.com, DJLittleRock.com. Peace. I'm out of here.